What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Essential Scares. I am your host, Corbin, and with me today is Ben. Hey, everybody. Really looking forward to talking about Barbie's Ultimate Dream House today, so. That is accurate in a lot of ways, actually. <laughs> uh, Bobby. <laughs> hey, uh, I know I'm late on this train, but Blizzard can fucking suck it. There you go. Yeah, fuck. There we go. <laughs> um, and Alan. Good evening. <laughs> ben uh, lagged out there first at the exact right moment. It was it was fucking. Did, did you guys hear what I yelled or like? No, no. Okay. But it it was well, it perf it cut out perfectly. All right. Uh, well, I said I just I just I said yeah fuck Blizzard and Activision. I wanted uh, to make sure that I was. I, you were I inclusive. Sure, I yeah, was trying to make it. sure that Bobby understood that we're on the right side of history. You know what I mean? True. That's true, important. True. That's important. I, as, I, I as a podcast of, of four white guys, I think yeah. that's important. <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's almost it's almost a statistical impossibility for us to be on the right side <laughs> of history at this, but yeah. we're trying. Oh man, we have got a great show for you guys today. We're going to be discussing Resident Evil Village, the long-awaited vampire dating sim by Capcom, but. Before we get into that, Bobby has a spoiler warning. <laughs> yes, I do. This will serve as your first one and only spoiler warning for Resident Evil Village. If you don't want this 8 to 10 hour game spoiled for you, and, you know, I, I'd understand that, uh, please skip to the time code ahead to see if we would say that this game is essential or not. I think that'll be interesting in and of itself. <clears throat> you know what? I'm just gonna like keep getting the social politics out of the way off the top, right? So like, big lady memes are just arrow to the knee jokes plus objectifying women. There, I said it. I said it. Now we can move on from it. Corbin. So, uh, you know, it's it's moments like that where it's interesting that we don't coordinate what I'm gonna say versus what you're gonna say because, of course, I mentioned that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a great podcast. We're very planned out. Yes. Um, so, I want to start out at the, at the front of this game and just say yes. that I was very surprised in retrospect yes. that the intro is as scary as it is. After after the crash, after, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, when you're so, first walking. Yeah, when you're first walking after, yeah. yeah, like that's yeah. one of actually one of the scariest parts of the whole game, and it it reaches back to Resident Evil Seven a lot, and I knew that this one wasn't as survival horror esque as that one was going in, um, but they almost fake you out at that part. They 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 tell you what the game is really about pretty quick, but um, thinking back on it, it's interesting to me that that they start out with that mood and not the way the rest of the game goes oh the fact think, that it gets really campy like right away <laughs> yeah it also benefits right off the bat I, I mean you can tell almost immediately the graphical upgrade we're looking at comparatively yeah. compared to resident evil 7 to mm -hmm. 8 and i mean these games are only separated they're separated by what two years two years and a con four years 2017 i think it came out. shit so four years in a console generation and boy oh boy does it pay dividends in resident evil village i mean the amount of times where especially once you get into the castle with all the way you see light reflecting every yeah. it look i mean you don't necessarily think how important graphics are to a horror game but they can do so much more with the atmosphere and lighting and sound it's those things make a huge difference with console leaps, and I think that shows. Sure. It, it also shows a lot for us since we just played through seven mm -hmm. uh, a month ago, and then we yep. get to play eight right now. The comparison there, it's 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 a night and day difference in terms for of sure. just visual and, and auditory aspects that really enhance the game a lot. The, if you ask me, the sound was a huge thing for me. I picked up on yes. that really quickly because like. Seven all the rustling kind of, every time you're walking around yeah you know? yeah a, a really utilize the sound uh to create most of the horror aspects i feel um yeah. there's a lot more fake sounds or sounds of things that are nearby but aren't really and there's really nothing visual to see at that because i mean it's so dark yeah. and it's so windy and things like that mm -hmm. yeah like the only 
the only thing that is really a visual scare, which is still mostly auditory, is that crow that's like hung up and it starts like screaming. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> after the immediate jump, I'm like, can I take this crow off the the thing? I, I don't want to watch this crow suffer. Like, yeah. and you can't yeah. for what it's worth. Uh, yeah, you, you have to have watch anything, the crow yeah. suffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then you go into like the the cabin. Right, and mm-hmm. then you get your first real taste of like there's something actual, like it's not just sounds. There's something actually out here, um, even though you you never really know what that is, right? Yeah. Like unless it's implied that it's one of those like fully shifted werewolves that you see later in the game. Um, I don't yeah, know. I, I don't know. I didn't really. Or what's his face? The Arias. Yeah. The... yeah. It definitely, yeah, definitely could yeah. be either way. Um, but speaking of werewolves, I want to, I want to yeah. talk about the werewolves. Sure. Did you guys know going in that this was a werewolf game? No idea. I, I yeah, think I, I did. I, don't know. I, I think I, I think that's something I did know because I was not surprised by it. Okay. Admittedly, I had watched a full playthrough of the game uh, before I played it because I didn't did, plan on playing it, and um, then, and then I was roped into this are. circus and then I played it, so So you played it so you watched the playthrough like like at launch, like months ago? Yeah. Months ago. Yeah. Uh, like so, I didn't watch a playthrough and then immediately pick up the game. This was yeah, like this was months <laughs> ago that I watched the playthrough. So for you, I, I uh was gonna ask this kind of later, but I mean, how was it for you this being your second time through it, basically? Uh I mean, it was fine. Like, I, I kind of knew the story beats, but it the the jump scares still got me. Like, sure. even even though, like, I kind of knew, like, where to expect things, they still worked. Um, I, I still got grossed out by Moreau. I still got turned on by Lady Dimitrescu. Um, I still got... <laughs> um, I mean... I still got creeped the fuck out by uh, House Beneviento. Um, Best part of the game. Straight up. uh, um, And then... um, Whatever. (laughs) And then, I mean... I really like Heisenberg as a character. I don't know that Heisenberg... I really don't know if Heisenberg fits in this world all that well. Oh, he fits oh, I, so I, I dis- well. Like, hard disagree. I, yeah, I don't. He's, I don't he's know. Like perfectly. I don't. I. I don't know. I, I mean, he, he, I'm fully willing to be wrong, but to me, he just seems like he should be in like. Uh, I mean, I guess a lot of this is kind of like Victorian, dude. Um, homie, homie, and pause. Pause. Chris Boulder Puncher Redfield is in this game. And there's a reference Albert to that. Wesker, it turns in, in Resident Evil 5, Albert Wesker literally turns into a tornado of meat. You're telling me that this that, that Heisenberg... Heisenberg is the most Resident Evil character no. in this game, and Chris I, Redfield did it. I don't, mean, I don't mean about his, like... I, the way he talks just feels a little no, out of the, place to me. Oh, the way he talks, that was my, that was my favorite Heisenberg. part of him. He's so he's doing smart. He's doing Bitch. Yeah. He Bad feels like bitch the, uh, Miranda. What's the character's name in Resident Evil Four? The the little guy. I don't know. Never played it. Uh, oh the yeah. Guy. I don't. Or whatever. He, he was like a the, baron of some kind. I don't remember. Yeah. What, yeah. Yes. He feels like him a lot. Yes. Which is a compliment because I well, love he, that. Character. And, I, and I think I think this game does a lot of parallels for Resident Evil Four. I actually so yeah. yeah. On that topic, one of the thoughts I had is. So, oftentimes in the show, I will say the better version of X does Y, and I think this game is effectively the better version of Resident Evil Five. By that I mean, Resident Evil Four comes out. It's a complete monumental shift in the entirety of what Resident Evil is at a core concept because of how the game plays wildly differently than anything before it. Resident Evil Seven does the same thing. For sure, it's first-person perspective. It has the roots of the game. Cool. So then we go to the sequel from the, par- the the paradigm shift. Whereas Resident Evil 5, I think, stumbled quite a bit throughout the game. I think Resident Evil 8 corrects the kind of mistakes that Resident Evil 5 made. I think. I understand where you're coming from there, mm-hmm. right? I don't. Where when you're comparing the trilogies, the Resident Evil trilogies, right, against each other... 
okay. that eight, eight okay. is a better follow up to seven than five is to four. I yes. get that. Um, I think that in the long run of things, we'll pro- history will probably look back on that statement and agree. But I think it's important to remember that five was not looked down on when it was new. No. You know, people liked five a lot, and it really wasn't until six came out and pushed the that form of things even further. Which I think nine has a huge chance of making that exact same mistake. Oh yeah. Um, if if every Resident Evil trilogy that's ever happened has something to say about it, it absolutely will. Absolutely. Will I play it? Yes. Will I hate it? Absolutely. Right. Like, I'm I'm fine with that. I know what's gonna. Yeah. You know, I yeah. see where this trilogy is going, and yep. I've got a couple years to come to terms with that, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, I think that 5 is actually a very good game. I mean, I, yes. I think that 5 yes. makes less mistakes, you know, than we might think it does. And a lot of the things that 5 does that are, like, completely ridiculous or over the top, like, 8 does exactly those things. Or 7 did them. Uh, like, a lot of the sequences in 4 and 5, like, are mirrored in 7 and 8. And so I don't, I don't know that I, that I agree entirely. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing through. I, 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 even even just, it was just double down, even yeah. just to double down with that, Corbin. Mm-hmm. Like Resident Evil Five is a lot more Resident Evil, like like in every single way, right? Yeah, and then I, I think sure. I think I think long term, I think that's part of the reason why Resident Evil Five does not get the uh, the same reception, mm-hmm. and I also think that's why this game won't either. Yeah. And that's part of um, why I think people look back on four as being so, so yeah. good because it was, it was, uh, almost it was, as grounded as a Resident Evil game could be. Two, four, seven, like they're all yeah. kind of. Compact. They they give they, yeah, they give a little bit more of a um, they change the format enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. like. But, but I, oh yeah. no, you go. I do. Go I, I I I wanted to talk about like legitimately like. One of the weird things that, like, I streamed all of this, and you can go to my Twitch if you want to watch both my things, is, like, one yeah, of... What is that? Of, what What is that? Oh, that is twitch.tv forward slash the red weenie. Okay. Um, and I, 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 I beat this game in uh, in two sittings within the, uh, over the last two days. Um, so, like, all is really fresh in my mind, but, like, I I remember, like, as when you first go into the village, you see uh, Castle... Demes, I don't, I don't know how to say her name. Demetres. Uh, Demetres. Dem- you see that like in the background, and it was like it felt very like I know it's a I know it's the fucking meme to be like it's the Dark Souls of blah blah blah, but like aesthetically wise, this game is kind of the Dark Souls of Resident Evil. Like it's very it, it leans very very heavily into like that weird, um, uh, uh medieval eldritch grossness that that uh miyazaki often leans into in 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 those types of games right even in like even like the older games like elder ring where it's like that's still kind of like thing right that that miyazaki did uh and so uh the creator of dark souls um sorry the, just a this is this is a horror podcast on a video game podcast um dark souls and i is, find that is a horror game basically oh, yeah yeah but i just you know I'm yeah. just clarifying for for our non game Gaber listeners. Um, I think that it's like, and I, I think that automatically puts someone like me who's a big fan of those games and they're like, oh, this is cool. Uh, but like, I don't know if it's entirely. I, I have my doubts that like for some people that it could be off putting mm-hmm. after you get out of the castle. Um, it also has it also to this game it also has the same pacing problems that Seven did where half of the game you're fighting one thing right you're fighting jack or you're fighting lady the the lady big lady um uh and you uh that's that's like the big thing and then the other half of the game it's just like boss after boss after boss and none of them really propose as much of a threat not even heisenberg although the heisenberg fight is uh fun as shit i love it it was so sequence we'll get to it when we get to it i I don't want to like get too far ahead of ourselves but i feel like that is like a big issue in this game is like it paces so it's like a really cool slow burn and Mm -hmm. then it just blows up 
Yeah. And I feel like that, that's, that's oftentimes the issue with Resident Evil games. Is it I, just like I agree. I was going to say, like, I, I feel like that's a, a franchise problem yeah. where they there is a it's set up really well they have something unique that's going on and they build the horror and they build the world and then after the first big blowout they're like okay let's make this ridiculous and let's you know gotta get it over with almost exactly I think, I think that's part of why people look back on four again so fondly because they do kind of kind of avoid that by reaching yeah. back into like the pacing a little bit um I don't know. Despite that, I really liked eight. You know, I mean, I think that yeah, it's. Sure. I think know, eight was a more enjoyable game than seven. Well, on, on the whole, I would agree, I would yeah. agree with that, and I really loved seven. I gave it a yeah. I gave it a four. I stand by that. I yeah. thought it was an incredible game. Uh, but eight was more fun. Yes, <laughs> it just yes. was. It it, it kind of. Uh, I was talking to my wife about it because she was interested in playing it based on the trailers, and I was sure. like. So I was explaining to her basically that like the uh, the vampire portion, right? Castle Demetresque is right in the beginning, and that was the part she wanted yeah. to do. And I was like, it's like three hours. That's the part that you're interested in. It's right in the beginning. Just do it. And the way I was describing to her is like this is kind of like the Van Helsing of video games, the Hugh Jackman movie. Oh, the, oh yeah, it absolutely. Is that is very, a very similar good. feeling to that action good. horror, just yeah. like a big adventure, like. But a lot of some scary moments, a lot of scary horror creatures, like yeah, it fits that niche, and it's a niche that hasn't really been filled in video games. Sure. And I, I really appreciated that. Sure. Before we go too much farther, I think yeah. we should talk about our first real encounter once we have weapons and everything with sure. the lichens. Oh, um, that's a, yeah, that's actually a really fun moment. Yeah, very well. It's it's a better ver. It's a better designed kind of version of the village encounter in Resident Evil Four yeah. in a way. Because in Resident Evil Four, you just kill X amount of people, the encounter is over. And I think that's technically true in this one. I don't really yeah. know what determines or if it's a t just a set timer. Once you've I'm not exactly sure. damage. Okay, so I was I was doing real well then, and that was like a five and a half to like eight minute encounter for me yeah. where i'm just like sweating bullets this yeah. whole time uh because i was like i i i intentionally tried to look up as little as i possibly could for this and that comes into play in a good way in the um the house sequence as well the, yeah. um and i i just love that the it's it, it kind of it feels that that helplessness vibe where you're like i I'm running out of ammo. I'm not getting ammo. What am I supposed to do here? What am I going to do? And then it, you know, eventually ends as, mm -hmm. as it's supposed to. But it's a really well-crafted beginning sequence to take. It basically, it, 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 it punishes you for being good at the game in a way, which I really like. The mm -hmm. idea of I'm fighting these things well, and now I have even less ammo and resources with they which to play the game. And they do that again later on in the stronghold. Yes, uh, yes very, they do. very well. And, and I, I fell I for actually, it again. <laughs> I did too. I'm just hanging out down there, blowing guys away. I'm like, how many of these guys yep. do I have to kill? What's going on? And eventually, after I was running pretty low on ammo, and this is the werewolf part in the stronghold. Yeah. this is like seventy percent like, through the yeah, game. You're... Um, and I eventually saw like the lattice work, and I was like, oh, I'm probably supposed to just climb up there. Maybe they'll, like they'll stop spawning. Oh, and, and they that do. early. That early, you just kept shooting. Oh, I was yeah, I was. Just you didn't on the even base go level. into their den yet. Oh man, because no, I figured okay, I could kill like twenty or thirty of these guys. They're they're not gonna spawn forever. I didn't think it would be an infinite spawn, because infinite spawning enemies until you get to a, a point is yeah. kind of a game design element that has fallen out of style. So I just didn't yes. think that they were doing that. They got me. I was. They got me on a meta I was, level. <laughs> I was headshotting werewolves like i had the sniper and i was like pop 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 <laughs> you're yeah. not gonna get me werewolves <laughs> i was using the sniper Speaking as a of, second shotgun for the most part me too yes the I was just like, so you get, <laughs> did you get wolfsbane oh, yes yeah okay great i wanted to make sure because that that i that's i don't I, know how i feel about that that's gun. what i beat the game with that's oh, my I, 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 where I, I don't know how i feel about that i, 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 blew, I didn't I use all it my at the end. Heisenberg. yeah Oh, I used it against the, uh, I forget what his name is, but the werewolf with the huge axe. Oh, okay. I used it on him, and then I didn't have it shortcutted, because I was like, oh, I'll take it back out in the next boss fight, and then I just never did. I never used it again. 
I had like I, four shots for Mother Miranda, so I got uh, through her entire first phase with just the Wolfsbane. I love that. But that's yeah, like, it, that's very action Resident Evil. Like, go back to four or five when you get yeah. the Magnum. I mean, you just blow guys away. Like, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. look at even seven, right? Yeah, like, true. Okay, so like, this, this is another issue I have with this game, is is this game is beat for beat the same game, um, just with a different coat of paint. It's, it's like a beat better, for beat it's like the better yeah. Resident Evil 7, basically. Yeah. You mean the Saw sequence that we said we didn't need a tutorial for, and then they gave us a Saw sequence without a tutorial, and it was much better for it? It's the best part of the fucking game? Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I stand by that. That was the, that was the moment. I don't the know, where I don't I know if I disagree most, with you. When I, I felt the most emotion and like both fear and like oh fuck something's happening shit my baby fuck my wife like uh it was great and then like that that uh and i know we're getting ahead i i want to get i want to go back to the bosses and starting with uh big ladies like actual boss form and like all of her daughters and stuff but yeah. like really quickly in that puzzle in in uh in the the the, the dollhouse uh, being yeah yes that's the one i'm again names are All lost good. to me uh I probably that, said it wrong so you guys can that, blame me for uh, that later <laughs> that fucking that fucking music box thing uh-huh. took me so long to notice what you were supposed to do oh yeah <laughs> like i was like i was like what the fuck they're they all look the same and then all of a sudden i saw that like two of the scratches were lined up i'm like my god i think i've figured it out well, yeah. Hold on. What do you mean? When so you like have to turn in the, the music, music box. box. Yeah. They're like they're they're, they're the way. Oh, that, that took me forever up. to figure out. Yeah. yeah. I, I I was sitting too far away from the TV. My couch is like, I don't know, probably like eight nine feet away yeah, from the TV, away. and I was like, what is happening here? And I I went and got up closer, and I'm like, oh okay, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, you look like you've got you're either frozen or you got something to say. No, I mean, <laughs> so I, I will admit that my, for some reason, my Discord is lagging out. I don't know why I don't have anything else running in the house besides my computer right now. So I'm just sitting here smiling, and then when I notice that it, it lags out, I just stop moving for a second, hoping that nobody notices, but... Um, we notice. Uh, well, it's fine. Um, I also do have something to say. I think mm-hmm. that Castle Dimitrescu could have been the whole game. If they had just expanded upon it, yeah, like, yeah, I agree. With um, like, I don't because I mean, Castle Dimitrescu gives you four bosses. Technically, three of them are mini bosses, but they could have done something cool with the three daughters. Like, each of them has a different vampire power or whatever that they use a whole lot. And then Lady Dimitrescu is the final boss of the game. Like, I just I think that this feels like they tried to and and it's it's weird because I if you go watch our episode about fear street 1994 i praised fear street 1994 for this and i and i'm kind of gonna give resident evil 8 a little bit of shit for it but like this has four very unique types of horror in it like it's got the vampire horror sure it's got the creepy doll horror it's got Body horror with Moreau, and then um, poor Moreau, man, he had a rough life. It's true. Like it, I don't like. Why did the, why would they make you feel so bad for him? Yeah, and then like really like do. I was I was <laughs> mad at Ethan. for like no reason. I was, right? <laughs> I was like legit mad at Ethan because like you're a fucking freak, and I'm like Ethan, be nice. But that's he, that's part of his that's part of his character arc into becoming a Resident Evil protagonist. <laughs> to be like fuck you freak, and it's like just he's just sad. Yeah. He's just sad. he's just like he, like like the first time you see him, the doll's making fun of him, and he's just like quit being mean to me. And I'm like oh no. It's even sadder too because once you find. Uh, well, we won't say that yet. Once you get, um, this, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't matter. So when you're Chris Redfield, yeah, uh, and you're about to find Mia, you find those books that detail the four mm-hmm. lords. Yeah, and his book, his, his entry is so sad because Mother Miranda's like, this guy's too fucking stupid and is a waste of space. Is effectively what his thing says. Yeah, and it's just, it's so sad. And, and I mean, Heiserberg kind of has a has somewhat of a point. Because he he says uh, he says something like I didn't ask for this, which is a very yeah. kind of trite line in a way. 
But none of them really did ask to have this occur to them. And really, the only one who I think even enjoyed it is Lady Demetresque. Really, because she, she her power. She was already a fucking vampire. Yeah. She already was a supernatural being. This just made her more of one. So well, no, she, she had a blood, okay she had a blood disorder that became that turned her into a vampire with the the cat the cadu. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah she I get wasn't. when I was reading it, I thought she just was a vampire outright already. I, I don't think that's the implication. I thought I thought that she had. A, a disorder that turned her into a vampire and it just so happened that her daughters had that same they weren't really her daughters right the other yeah. three vampires had that same condition and that's what turned them into vampires as well but but going back going back to hutch's point um i i do think that um that i disagree with this like the distinct horror element of it like that being a bad thing because i i like that it it gave uh, a different set of pace, even though some of them were far less successful than others, right? Um, but I I agree with you that that all could have happened within the castle, and uh, uh, Lady Dem- Demetresk could have been the big bad, right? Like you like she's all of the marketing material. She yeah. is the like I don't give a fuck about Mother Miranda. Like like even I've played this game. And I enjoyed it a lot, but like that, even that boss fight was just like, oh, cool. So they're just like, that's, 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 that's a, that, that's a cool wallpaper. And like, that's about it. Like, um, I just don't think each of the individual pieces fit together here very well. Like, I don't think that the Castle Demetresque fits into the same puzzle that House Beneviento and the swamp and the factory fit into. So hear me out. I think I think the reason why it doesn't fit is because again, I think Mother Miranda is not a satisfying big bad. I think if you connected like I think you could connect those pieces together in a way that was that would have worked, but I think that she doesn't. And so you can like, almost you know sorry what I mean? to cut you off there. You could almost flip flop Mother Miranda and Lady Demetresque. Maybe not necessarily have Mother Miranda be in the castle, but just the village itself, since the village basically idolized Mother Miranda. That's that's very common in everything we see in lore bits. Sure. And kind of flip the switch where your final destination is to get into the castle, because yeah. Demetresque is doing whatever she's doing. I just don't think it makes sense, because like you said, Alan, the whole village idolizes Miranda, and like she's evil like like it do, do the people in the village know that they're praying to an evil demigod like like i, they, I, know. I think so yeah. because <laughs> because it seems like everybody knows that like the castle is bad that miranda and her cronies exist and that people have been taken in the past and it it seems like mother miranda is basically playing god and devil for them where yeah. she is okay. taking people but then also because she has these powers is bestowing gifts to some people or is like bringing things to them to you know give them a reason to pray so they're kind of i feel like they're praying not only for like for her benefits uh but also to kind of keep away you know whatever negatives could happen so um, you're you're saying this is like paying the mafia for protection kind of yeah i think so kind of yeah um also like i i i disagree that we could have flipped the two of them, Mother Miranda and Lady Lady Dumitresque, and it worked. I think the issue isn't so much that Miranda is the final boss, and more so that we just don't see enough of her. I think that in previous games, like, a lot of the time when you had a, a big final boss, you kind of knew who that boss was. You were working towards that boss, and you would even get captured by the boss or whatever in the like, yeah. like other times. Like... You know, you get captured by Mother Miranda right one time in the very beginning, but then Ethan and Miranda do not have any other direct contact. And I think no. that was probably the missed opportunity is some some more dialogue between them, some taunting, some Resident Evil style, like, blah, in blah, fact, blah. In fact, she gets the same hype up that, that Heisenberg does, mm-hmm. right? Because, like, the, the first time you see her the real version of her it's after the 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 house burns down with all the people that 
that they they make you like one of them just enough to feel bad for everybody. Um, yeah. uh, Why does everybody around me keep dying? Oh yeah, he's so bad. He's so, I, he, he, he did not he did not do a good job t- being a voice actor. I loved that, and I loved Ethan the whole way through. His I, he was so over. Ah, so ah, ah, oh, ah, he was so ah, ah, overacting, falling hundreds of yeah, feet. I loved it. Um, but uh. Like, you see her just killing some dude and walking away, and then yeah. you see Heisenberg beat the shit out of you, which is much more like, like I don't know who these people are. Like, yeah. I felt bad for Grandpa when the when the Grandpa guy died, when, like, the girl died, like, but, like, they, they, they were around for, like, ten minutes, like, if that. Yeah. So it wasn't, like, eh, whatever. Like, um, you feel bad because they're human beings, but, like, eh. Yeah, but like, no, I think um, Eisenberg would have even been a better final boss than Mother Miranda. Like, I just don't give a shit about Miranda. Yeah, like because they don't build her up. Exactly. I, I think I don't. I think that Mother Miranda is a good character. I think she has a great story. I think that thinking about her position in the Resident Evil universe, like the lore wise, she deserved a bigger part of the game. I think that the game that's probably the game's biggest disservice is that they just don't treat her well enough. Hmm. So, in terms of boss fights, yes, um, I think it's as great as the house sequences. I think that's by far the weakest boss fight. Which one? The doll. Oh, it's gonna be find the doll and stab it. Oh, that's fun though. It's it's <laughs> it's it's super unique. Like I, it's I got a unique. I I guess. got it on my first try, but I feel like there are plenty of people who didn't. I did not. I got got. I yeah. got got once I did um, by all the dolls, and then I I got it after that. I but got, it's just I got got once because I didn't know that there were two rooms. I like I didn't go in the room upstairs, mm-hmm. and that's where it okay. was. And so I, I was just like, well, I don't know where she went. <laughs> I don't know. I when I did that fight, I just I when it finished. I guess the problem I had is all the stuff leading up to it, the whole scary bit, the puzzle bit, which we'll talk about. I think here in just a second. Like yeah, we'll talk about it right after the boss fight. That weird way to do things, but here we are. It's time. I, I think it it's set time. me up for a a, a more int- I guess interesting is not the right way to phrase it. I it I I the sequence prior to the boss fight, I think primed me for something great. And then I got to this boss fight where all I had to do was find a doll and stab it in the head. And I, I I'm not necessarily I, I'm not saying I can come up with a better option off the top I, of my I, head i have a better boss fight in my head right now but it's it's is, one of those it, things is where it I fighting, wish is it fighting the uh, the abomination baby no i was i don't want to do that no i don't my, want, I, I want to be anywhere near that thing no fuck the abomination baby but my idea is you keep that same sequence in that you have to go through in the game and then like the third time you stab a doll or whatever that in the real game constitute the end of the constitutes the end of the boss fight yeah. it just like kind of shatters the illusion a little bit and then like she gets all freaky deaky and starts like controlling different dolls and you have to like kill the dolls while also doing damage to her i just think that would have been more fun because like she was definitely the weakest of the of the four lords and the like least interesting to deal with like i think her setting was the most fun um overall but like she as a whole, was the least interesting to deal with in the end. And I think I, they could have just added ba- basically a big encounter at the end and it would have been better. I don't think it would have worked. Um, I think I, I, I think that, like, I, again, I've said this, like, seven different seven different ways, but, like, this is my favorite part of the game. And I think part of the reason why it's so fun is while the gun combat in this game is, like, a million times better, um this game this part of the game is really cool because there's there's a real threat there's a real presence of like it's the one part of the game where there's like a real threat and presence of like you can die in this moment and you have no weapons mm-hmm. um and it's i the think the only real survival horror element yes. of, of the game and because I, I, that's you're, why it works yeah yeah cuz you're safe every time you don't have guns in this game up until that point and it's just like oh it's so like you get like it was the most tense i was it was the most nervous i was about the whole time and even that thing was like okay i've got scissors so like what it's, it's like hey hide and go see let's go find this thing and like you're tense and you're like how long do i have to do this and like you can feel like all of the dolls staring at you even though they're not like just like ah they're gonna kill me like it I, I, it, and it and then after you do it it's like oh it's finally over i um, don't disagree with you that it was tense yeah but 
uh, my note literally says like that was kind of lame which that's it's just I... that it just didn't it didn't connect for me that boss fight and i think a lot of that is because the baby the the uh, b- babe abomination i don't know what we want to call this fucking thing was so bomb baby so disgusting the first and it the first time you see it i you, you want to talk about reveals done right yeah. the first time you see that thing you are not prepared you're not i didn't see it the first time i the first time i, 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 I didn't either yeah i ran i was I heard, running away I, as soon I, as I heard the, i heard the i heard the baby noise i'm like i'm getting the fuck out of here oh and apparently so was... you're supposed to hide in the closet but i just ran as far as I possibly could. Yep. Bobby and I did it the same way. The first time I saw it was when you're hiding under the bed. Okay. Oh, no. And you, you I, don't, I never and you don't even really bed. see it. You yeah, just, you just see, see like, like the, the box. Yeah, so I thought that that was... A, I actually thought that that was it, how it was supposed to be because that's yeah. how I did it. And so I was like, oh, this is great. You don't really see it. You hear it a lot. There's a lot of sounds. The first time you see it, you just see some of it. Like, for me, that was a big part of the I think so Alan and I had very different experience. At the very end. I think Alan and I had very different experiences than you guys then, because, like, I got... Did you guys get caught by the baby at all? No. Uh, No, I didn't have that happen. I got caught by the baby, and the thing just fucking eats you, dude. Like, it just, like, grabs you and, like, shovels it into its, like, giant, like, maw. Oh, no! It's like... Oh, no! Like, I did not get scared in Resident Evil 7 a single one time. Like... They, I got creeped out a couple times during the Fear Street movies, but like this is the only time that in this horror, this little horror journey that I've gone on with you guys, where I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, I, it, because the fucker, like, if you like, because I, I'm bad at games. I didn't know where I was supposed to go. I got caught in a fucking corner. Homie runs up on me and like fucking like eats me, and I'm like, "All right." So, my experience is I'm walking down the hallway, happy as a clam, creeped out as fuck, because all the lights are down, (laughs) and just around the corner, I see face. And the, I was literally, like, a YouTube thumbnail of, like, any of, any of those guys from, like, 2011 who played Amnesia, and just, like, you could that was me. Markiplier. I was gonna say it. Yeah, I know, right. but I I legitimately like yelled. I I exclaimed to nothing. And Maggie was doing something. Was probably like, "What the fuck is he doing over there?" <laughs> She's on a business call. And yeah. Like the oh, fuck. It's like, <laughs> basically so, what happened. My, my husband's playing video games. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Like, is I knew no, no, it was no, a big baby. I turned around please, and please, was please, like, please, "I'm please. out." Like, yeah, like, yeah. dude, straight I, up. I immediately turned around, ran directly into the closets, or into, like, little uh, locker mm. in that side room, and was like, I'm just gonna stand here until I know it's safe, and then I heard it coming towards me. <laughs> it, you want to talk about effective horror. That entire sequence. Because yeah. it makes you feel uh, safe, and then it just rips that away from you. Yeah. And so yeah. for me to finally so get good. around the thing, I had to go hide under the bed mm-hmm. because it caught me. I couldn't get to uh, the little fuse box. It was between me and the, I couldn't get back to it. So I had to go all the way around, get under the bed, wait for it to go around and then sprint yeah. to get out of there. I and think the that's whole how you're time, supposed to do it. I no, you that, can wait for the baby to leave. Like it, it disappears from a, after a minute. Eight. It, it look it worked for me it pinned me in an in an area and i i had to run away also they fucking closed the doors on you too yeah and i was like oh no it again this whole sequence had so many moments that worked perfect yeah. like i yeah. i think i experienced this whole sequence in the most optimal way yeah. where the like however the designers thought this is we this is how we want player to go a b c d i think i went on that exact path I don't know, it man. Was the, so good. So, so the first, I, I just want to explain the first time, right? Because I hear it, and it's making those like weird, like radio baby sounds, like that is all. They're also like demonic, and I fucking bolt. I run as fast as I fucking can. I like burst through like four doors, and then I, I hear the baby like leave, right? I'm like, okay, and I walk out, and you see. I don't know if you ever noticed this. You see the fucking umbilical cord. And I'm like, I did not notice the umbilical cord. Yeah, there's there's an umbilical like it's dragging its body across them, so there's a trail of blood and an umbilical cord. And I'm like, 
I guess I'm supposed to follow this. And so I'm just like, oh, please don't be at the end of this umbilical cord. Like, and then, yeah, eh, fuck, dude. It, fuck. I think you should all jump back in and, and go to that, just to get to that section, just to get caught one time. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll, see I'll what pull it's it up. Like. I'll, pull, I'll pull up the, uh, the yeah, clip. The, the, Somebody's yeah. got a clip of that. Oh, that's um, okay, yeah. But no, I mean, I, I I agree. Like, I think that 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 whole sequence is great, and and a huge huge part of it is just because you don't have a gun. Even though there's nothing to shoot, if you yeah. had a gun, you would have felt less scared. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. you feel like you've got a little piece of protection on you, even though sure. it wouldn't matter. And and that's it. It's you know continuing on the theme of what Resident Evil Seven did, where it was kind of like their take on uh, modern horror. You know, like that is a hallmark of modern first-person horror games, is not having any weapons at all. Uh, and so it was really cool seeing Capcom do that and do it so, yeah. so, so, so well. It was yeah. really, really good. Um, I liked the the fight at the end. Yeah, me too. It's good. I like it because it's so different from the others. Like, yeah. it really slots in as a nice change of pace. You know, like, Castle Dumbertrask is so long, and then that's right after it. And I think that that's part of why that sequence is so effective because it's such a breath of fresh air compared to the previous segment. And yeah. so it hits you harder that way because you have now been like running and gunning and, you know, killing stuff for so long that you kind of think the game is one thing. And so when you then have this nice, condensed, like 45 minute horror experience that isn't that at all. I think it's more impactful because of where it's placed than if it was like on its own. So something else uh, we we've been we've been singing the praises of this game. So I think we should bring up maybe some some of our negatives because I know we all probably have a few. I, mean, I, said, I, said, that, but... I had a few negatives about Miranda. Yes, but overall, this has been a pretty positive podcast. Anyway, sure. Well, it. maybe uh, this is a pretty positive outlook. I'm not saying it's not, but <laughs> I I. The more I played through five, and as I got nearer to the end, eight. the more I wish that there. Sorry, eight. My bad. I wish there wasn't a. Did you play the right game? <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, it's one with Chris Redfield, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I, I really think I prefer not having a crafting system in a Resident Evil game. Every and I, well, well, you but can't. yeah, every that's a they, hallmark of the no, no, no. franchise. But I mean, like, ammo crafting. I, I understand you craft, like, herbs and stuff, and that makes sense to me. But I think the ammo side of things, it changes up the feel of the game when I know, okay, I've collected X resources, I can now get a get-out-of-jail-free pass. I, I prefer the idea of finding ammo, because then the game is more dynamic in that way. And I by think... that, I mean the, the developer can kind of craft how much ammo you should have. And they can kind of do that with the crafting system, but I... I just, I find my, I, I found myself constantly going, why do I, why? Just, just, just structure the level and the ammo in areas in a way where you would do the same thing without me having to go through this crafting system. It just, it just seemed like more, it seemed like more of a nuisance than it was something I really wanted to do. So here's why I think the crafting system works. I think it works on two levels. It works, first of all, because this is primarily an action game and so yeah. resource scarcity is not an element of this game and that's okay that was a design design decision that they made and so being able to craft a lot of ammo is fine and they have the encounters are all built around you being able to craft a lot of ammo uh and the second element of it which actually could potentially lead into the horror side is that when you can craft your own ammo you have to pick what ammo you want to craft and so there is an element of of sort of like self-induced scarcity there that it, that could happen because like okay you could get 15 hand handgun rounds right or three shotgun shells and you don't know what's going to be more important shotgun shells every time see so i disagree i only made shotgun shells one time i was pumping out handgun shots like nothing i was just blasting guys with my sidearm the whole game why did oh, you go yeah. 1911 or the lemmy 1911 is way better and then i upgraded Same. again i upgraded again to the third one uh so oh you I actually just... sold all your old shit to get the third one oh, i yeah. want the shotgun i want the shotgun instead of i, I, did. I just upgraded my weapons 
I got both. <laughs> I put a ton of resources into the yeah. uh, the Magnum as well. A I ton. didn't because I knew I didn't have that much ammo, so I was like, I'm not gonna be able to use this that much, so I'm gonna upgrade my other stuff. And so. you can't. It's not. It's not ammo you can build either. So like, exactly. Um, I see. I so just. Yeah. I went hard in the handgun in the Wolfsbane upgrades, yeah. and it. And, and what about? The bosses. I mean, you like. Uh, you like four. I mean, that's that's very similar. But like that, I think. Well, crafting's a big part of every Resident Evil game. Exactly. Again, yeah, and you can't craft ammo in that one. But like, that's my big contention. There is ammo crafting to me is is where I have more of a problem because <laughs> crafting herbs to get better resource that's fine. I like that 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 works for me. It's just I think I think the developers are better able to craft an experience when they explicitly decide where your resources are as opposed to design an encounter and a player can have between x ammo and x ammo with these specific types of guns in my well, the way i, I think mean, through I, it they I, have more control if i never felt where it is exactly. I, don't, I, I never don't felt that, that it needs that yeah, i never felt that any 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 experience any part of this game i yeah, i would have had i would have felt more or less freaked out if i had more or less ammo like i agree it, like they, I think even with crafting, right? I was always at that point where I was like, man, I could use some more rounds, but never at the point where it was like I was totally helpless, which made me feel good, but always made me feel on my toes. Like I have, I have issues of this game with this game, right? Like, and it, it has less to do, but I, I don't think personally the the mechanics of the gameplay, like the like you know the brass tacks of the action bits of the gameplay are, is not part of it for me mm -hmm. right like puzzles sure like are some of the boss fights and especially some of the mini boss fights repetitive and like take too long yes uh is the voice acting in this game just atrocious yes is the writing in this game just atrocious double yes winters i told you to my wife my wife, Chris, you piece of shit! Like, <laughs> we really should have told told Ethan yeah. about the plan. Yeah, boss. <laughs> I'm That's such a bad and great. Everybody, line everybody's time. like, "Oh man, we should have told this guy that we definitely know who he is." Yep. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think. I I don't I don't, I don't know I don't have as many. I don't have the same again. downsides as it did. It did happen again, right in front of, right in the middle yeah. of your. Your audition, Ben. I'm really sorry. I don't know what's happening, guys. I, <laughs> I've i gone to my control panel to see if there's anything running in the background that I'm not aware of. And literally the only two things I have running are Discord and Audacity. I don't know what's going are, on. Are you, are you mining This Bitcoin episode right sponsored now? by Ben's tech issues? <laughs> yeah, what? seriously. <laughs> www.essentialscares.com <laughs> backslash <laughs> Ben's tech issues. Yeah. Yep. Um, buy me a new PC. Ben, we're we're talking we're talking downers, buddy. Yeah. What were some yeah, I mean, you had about this game? Yeah, I mean, the only village in this game is the village that you need to get yourself to play through the whole game. You know what I mean? Like, like it does dip. It does dip at quality pretty pretty hard. Like, like, like for for how much we all like, we're talking about how great Heisenberg is as a smarmy villain. That his entire area is like the worst part of the game. Oh, completely. there's just so it's, much of it. And I, there's just, just none of it is good. It's, it's like one level too good. long. No, like, no, no. It's three levels too long. No, like, I disagree with that. I, 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 I don't think it's three levels too long. I think, I think you get all the way to the top, then you got to go all the way back down to the bottom again and deal with the power being out, and you have to deal with those so many of those. Fucking, uh, I don't even remember what they're called, but they just, the deaths. chest. Yeah, yeah. just they're there so was easy too to much kill, of that. Though, so. Yeah, and I and they're and they're even easier to avoid. Like, there's a couple moments oh, where I, I actually died. Yeah, did you I, avoid I, things? I, yeah. What's the point? I, I like. I don't. I don't need to kill these things. Like I, I by, had so much ammo. My, <laughs> by that point, by that point in the game, all of my guns were fully upgraded, and the only time I needed to kill things is when a boss happened. So like, I was like. They dropped, I'm just... they dropped hella money though, dude. Like oh, 20 I didn't case, need hella like money. I didn't need hella problem. money. You I didn't need hella money. I did, I did, I did a completely like I, did. I did a completely <laughs> vegan run. I did not eat any food upgrades. And so like so <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes. I fucked dude, up with my I, food I upgrades. Did you I, get the I, one? I, I didn't kill I didn't kill a single animal. I didn't kill a single animal in that entire game. Did you get the one that increased your damage when blocking and then you just never blocked? 
I never blocked ever. That was actually another I, part of the whole game I hated. I, I hated only, blocking stuff. In I, I blocked, blocked, I blocked the through the Heisenberg fight. Same. I Other, the otherwise, Heisenberg not at all. Because the chainsaw block, was like, I was like, yeah. yes. I was like, well, well, I guess I have to block now. Like, I actually forgot there was a block up until that sequence because they put yes. the controls back on the screen. And I was like, yeah. ooh, block. That makes sense. <laughs> I just that's right. I could do this the whole game. Like, yeah. yeah. I remember so I after fucked that. Up because <laughs> when you get the fish in the very beginning... Like, or in the, the Castle Demetresque section. No. You do not... I, so, I didn't see um, our our boy, the Duke, until way... I think I had killed two of the vampires before I even, like, found him. I just never went into that room. Dude, I just boy, never yeah, went in there. You weren't, you weren't hot-checking your map to make sure all your rooms were blue? No, I, I really wasn't. But. So, I totally missed him for a long time. That's so, the by the time I... Was. I, feel I know. Like Alan's just bad at video games. I and well, so hold on. To even really go farther in that, I accidentally missed the second save point in the castle as well. So I'm sitting playing through the castle, and I'm like two and a half hours in, and I'm like, I got shit to do today, and I hadn't seen a save point yet. So I'm mostly through all of the Castle Demetresque, and then I finally find the Duke and save, because I'm an idiot sometimes. Is that Alan wasn't played playing Map Check segment? Simulator like the rest of us no. were. Dude, I, 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 was that, like, I, was. I wasn't even playing Map Check Simulator. I, I, I barely checked my map at that point, because I kept forgetting that it existed. Uh, but like that, the, the Duke's room was like, I was like, oh, this is probably a safe room, right? Because it's like a single door right by the place out of. And I, I went in there. I'm like, "Oh, hey, Duke!" And, like it was the like it was the most obvious goddamn thing of the world. Yep. Yeah. I, totally I mean, missed, for me, it, but for, it was pick I up one him. item. <laughs> what did you do, then. Alan? I was gonna say I, I picked up one. Fuck. <laughs> ah! I picked up one <laughs> item and then checked my map to see if the room had gone blue, and then it wasn't. And then I'd walk around and be like, "Fucking, what else am I?" And then I pick up another item and I check to see if the map goes blue, and then it did. And it's so I, I was checking the map. Ben, it, ben and I played the same game. I think the first time I <laughs> so, noticed that the, that the rooms turn blue once you're done with them is when you picked up the when you picked up the grenade launcher, and I was like, "Huh?" Okay, I looked and it was like, "I was like, huh, that's red." And I went in there and I picked up the grenade launcher, and the room was still red. I'm like, "Oh, there's still something in here." So that means like the red room still have items in it. So, and then, so, that, so that actually brings up an interesting point. So you guys didn't notice that they did that in seven, then? Oh no, I no. didn't notice it in seven. I did. Uh, I don't check the maps in these games. So I in, just. In, they're so linear it doesn't matter that's true uh in seven if any of you guys decide to go back through seven again uh the doorway to each room is red and when you go through and you if you pick everything up the doorway will turn blue so it's not as obvious as in eight but it, yeah. you can still check it to make sure you got everything hmm. never yeah. noticed Fun i fact. think i think in order for me to be the one person that trashes this game probably the most i just i i don't think that all of the bosses went together that well i just really think that this is several games that they tried to shove together. We talked about Resident Evil Infinite Darkness and how it was the cutting room scraps. I feel like they had like four Resident Evil game ideas and they just didn't have them. I'm frozen again. No, they, they just didn't have them really well. They were like, oh, but we can put these four things together and make one game, so. Yeah. I Okay, so I don't think, I don't think comparing it to Infinite Darkness is exactly fair, but I hear your point. Um, uh, there, there is a certain, like, is this, is this them trying to, like, re-bring up the Dooku? You guys know, right? The universal dark, the dark universal cinematic universe. You guys remember the Dooku, right? Yep. Uh, but make it Resident Evil, because they kind of are trying to do that, right? Uh, that being said, it's also, uh, I don't know. I think all of the moments in and of themselves work really well. And, like, I find, I think, like, out of all the boss fights, I think, out of all the zones, I think the Moreau section kind of w was the weakest by, like, a long shot. I never felt scared. I never felt out of it. Fighting Moreau felt more like a chore than anything yeah. else. Like, like. That was the first time I died. Yeah. Heisenberg, at least, the boss too. fight was cool. When I right? was the, crossing the, the water bridge, that was... <laughs> oh, no, oh, yeah, no, because, like, I, I had to, like... killed in the Moreau boss fight. Oh, no, I didn't. It was when you, when you had to, like, pull the, the switches down. Yeah. I just didn't run across fast enough, and I... Oh, I died, like, twice in that sequence, because yeah. I'm bad at video yeah. games. You got but killed like, by the acid rain? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. But, like, the... But, like, like I think that's... The only reason why it suffers and why the Heisenberg zone isn't worse than it 
is because the Heisenberg fight is just like they they and forego cool. all spookiness and it's just like this is fucking dope. Let's like I it is. I, I actually it's think not- that the Heisenberg factory sequence is good and i think that you and maybe me as well are a little bit biased against it because it was the tail end of a long binge and i feel like if Mm. i was playing that game regularly i i wouldn't have felt as negatively about heisenberg's factory i just i just it didn't it didn't work for me Mm. none of it really worked for me and like it felt stupid but like when you got down and like Chris Redfield is like, Mia wasn't Mia, she was actually Miranda the whole time, and you're just like, fuck, this is like, like, I, I it, like fuck. all Thanks. of that, everything about it was just like, this is so fucking lame. And it's like, and then he's like, hey, go kill it, and you look you wanna... over and like, I'm like, is that, is that a, is that a <laughs> robot tank? Is that, is that a robot tank? tank? <laughs> it's a he's like, I just built. Drive it. He, he's like, I built this for you, and I'm like, I'm like. So you're just, you're just you're just giving up on this game, huh? Well, fuck it, I'm in. You go in the robot tank. But like, I mean, I'm, stuff like that, that is so Resident Evil, though. Like they, every yeah, Resident Evil, up. every Resident Evil totally jumps the yeah. shark somewhere yeah. along the way. Like I feel, I feel like if you want a nice tight horror game, this is just the wrong franchise because it, yeah. it just never is. <laughs> I just like Chris just flips so quick. Like, well, he's the got whole anger g- problems. Well, no, I'm like <laughs> the whole older. The whole the whole game. He's like Ethan. I told you to stay away. Ethan, I told you to not get involved. Hey, okay. Ethan, you want to take this take this tank no, no. and go kill the the other guy real here's, quick? Here's like, the here's one of the fucked up parts. Right, he takes Ethan and like because he's he's trying to like save them and send them to like a safe house and this shit gets attacked and then they find and then he finds him again instead of being like holy shit you're still alive we have to keep you safe. He becomes a dickhole again. Like, what the fuck was Ethan Winter supposed to do? <laughs> like, legitimately. Like, he woke Die. up. He woke up freezing to death in like in a car wreck. And then he's like, "Why are you here?" Chris Redfield knew that. Like, he knew that that was something he had to have known. And he's just like, like, it's like again, the writing in this game is atrocious. It's just, it's like, like while Resident Evil 7 does the good, like I said, the good thing of pretending it's not a Resident Evil game until it's too late, until you're too far invested in it, to like, and so you can let it go. This game does not do that to its detriment in that one way. Like, mm. the fact that, like, you're fucking, the Chris Redfield scene, which is admittedly super fun and, like, super cathartic, it was uh, like the Mia scene, but way, way better. It was what the way Mia scene better. should have been. Yeah. Should have been, right? Um, but, like, the fact that they have to shoehorn in, like, by the way, if you haven't gotten the reference, the thing, the little, the, the little like, thing that makes your baby a person again, that's the umbrella symbol. And, like, the guy, the guy who made umbrella, he was there, and he's like, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call umbrella, like, the symbol. Remember that? Remember, remember Resident Evil? Remember Re- Umbrella Games? And I was like, what, what? Why you gotta do that? We got it. We got it when we saw it. We we got that like, oh, there's a reference here to something that like umbrella's older than we could e- we could possibly know. And they just they just chose to be like masturbatory with it, and it was the stupidest goddamn thing. Is that enough hatred for you, Alan? Is that enough no, hate? I, yeah, no, we got we got to put some hate on it. You know, we got we got to so, keep everything in check. I, I, uh, I guess so. <laughs> now to go into more so things, I'm, I love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna balance. Game. I'm gonna balance out the story aspect really quick. Okay. Not entirely, uh, but I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the one card that I have that you guys don't have, and Uh-oh. it's the dad card. And I'm gonna say that that angle did get me. And that there were oh, sure. a couple of scenes that I was I was very much like, oh, like they kinda got me there. Like the whole thing of like trying to trying to get your baby daughter. I have I have a daughter, so that really got to me. Yeah. Um the when you first find out what the uh the flasks were, yeah. I was like that might have been the most like aghast I've ever been playing any game ever in my whole life. Like they really got me with that scene. <laughs> 
Um, and so, like, I think that that affected the way that I felt about Ethan, despite the writing being so over the top and the acting yeah. being even more over the top to match. Uh, because there were a lot of points where I was just like, I get it, Ethan. I get it, man. <laughs> oh, oh, so, so, for the word, I, like, again, I do not understand that aspect of it. So, it, I, I kind of took a backseat to it, but Ethan's, um, motivations made complete oh, sense. Yeah. Like, 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 just total sense. Like, it's like, yeah, if I was a dad, like, you go hell and high water for your fucking kids, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that I get. But, like, man, like, I, I, and, and, like, all of those moments, I was more like, oh, no, that's a baby head. Ha, ha, ha. But, yeah. like, I, it's just, it's just, it's bad writing and then not well voice acted over the top of it. So like, you're just like, you get it. And you're like, man, that's, that sucks for you, dude. But like, Jesus, like, come I, I on. Think the voice I, acting is about as good as seven was. Honestly. I don't know. I feel like Ethan Winter's voice actor put more effort into being like freaked out and like screaming and like shouting and being like scared and like, when like really awful things were happening to him, like he put his whole throat into like I'm falling hundreds of feet, and that happens like five different times, and you're just like, ah, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, ha, 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 ha. And instead of like you know full throated, just like I am going to die, <laughs> like, I mean maybe he knew that he couldn't have died because what is dead cannot die. That's maybe true. he knew, but but what he did know, but he did know, he did know to reattach his arm. Just by just putting just like hey, okay. <laughs> so before I knew, obviously before we knew what it knew, yeah. I when he did that and he pours the the med water over it, yeah. I was like, this game goes whole hog. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, why didn't he just? Well, I I even said that I'm like, why didn't he just why didn't put, he put his fingers, fingers? back? Up? <laughs> yeah. And so, and someone and someone who like come into the chat after was like, he's like, what is he gonna do? Reattach his fingers? I'm like, yeah, he reattached his whole ass arm. Yeah. And like, the, uh, I, I guess is not I, happy with this whole discussion. Right I now. guess I guess two out of the three major spoilers of this game. I guess that Ethan Winter was going to die. I guess that mother, like right away. I guess that Mother Miranda was uh was the fucking old lady. Yeah. I did not guess that Ethan Winters is made out of the mold. That he's just been molded the whole time. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. By the way, you died in the beginning of seven. You've been molded this I whole time. I love that time. flashback, and they showed it. It's like, yep, yeah, this is it. You got your skull yeah. caved in. You're a dead man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he fucking killed you when he sn- when he put his boot to your when skull. When he said, "Welcome to the family, son." Which well, which I mean, you really to be did more, though. Yeah, yeah, more true than yeah. we knew at the time. So to relate to back to a criticism Ben had in Resident Evil Seven. What did you think of the enemy variety in 8 compared mm. to 7? Because in 7, I remember that was one of your big critiques, because you're like, we felt like two different molded things, and it was dumb. So what about 8? How did it do compared? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I sounded. Exactly. Um, I was uh, just in New York, I apologize. Yeah, so we uh, we definitely got a little bit of a wider variety of enemies in this game. And, uh, and they walk but, in here. And, the, and, and you know, I gotta go to my favorite, like get my favorite New York slice, Sabaro. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, no. Um, uh, Alan's wearing a Dunder Mifflin shirt. I had to. Um, no, the enemy variety was better in this. There were... A, a handful several. of different, just several, a, a handful of different lichen types alone, and then there are zombie dudes, and then there are the big muscly robot guys, and there are like five different types of big muscly robot guys. There was a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, they, they, I like, I, I'm spoiler alert. I am not going to rate this game very highly, but I am going to rate it higher than seven. So, nice. what did you give a seven? I gave one, seven a two, solid two. One point five, two. Oh yeah, it yeah. was going to be a one point five, right? But then it was going to be a no, one. It was, was going to be a one. The DLC and it became yeah. a two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a gripe I have with the Chris Redfield section. Okay. In the DLC, you can ADS. You can't ADS in this game. What is that? Yeah. You, can you already ADS. have a section where you play as Chris, but you don't ADS in eight. No, you, you have ADS the Fallout just three as ADS. much as you do in. No. In the DLC, you aim oh, down guess, sight. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, you actually yeah. do. Also, on top of that, they explicitly oh. call out that that Mia and Ethan have military training, but yeah. you can't ADS. 
I, I, the Maybe first time I, I had think, a gun I think in that's, my hand, I think that's I, gameplay. I it's, it's gameplay. Yeah. That's, it, it was one of those things where it didn't bother me per se because I kind of learned like ADS was a trap anyway. Like you really don't, you shouldn't do it is what I learned from playing. It's just, just don't even, it's not as useful as you think. It's um, useful if you're using the handgun. Mm-hmm. I don't think I so. Use, and I use, I, I, I ADS every time and I use the handgun the whole game. So I, I found out, I, for me, it, it felt like I was more accurate and doing just better, not even ADSing at all. It with just the sniper seemed, rifle, I'll agree with that because you just use the sniper me, rifle as a second shotgun. The only, I definitely the did. only one I always ADS with was the shotgun. That was the only one I always did. You Every just, other weapon, I bang. kind of felt it was just easier without it. So, have you considered know. that maybe you're a pro gamer after all? Or no. Conversely, he's very bad and just had to shoot a lot of shots no matter what he was doing. Awesome. <laughs> I just didn't see that the benefit. Much more likely. <laughs> just, yeah. Have you considered that maybe it's because you used the Lemmy, a absolutely terrible gun? No, no, no. I didn't old, use the Lemmy. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I used the 1911. Okay. I waited until I upgraded the 1911 a little bit because I had the recoil compensator, and that gave a hell of a lot of damage to the Lemmy, but I did eventually convert to the 1911 because okay. it was great. Fair. Um... So one, uh, you know, one one last question that I had for everybody: Are you going to play it again? No. Will you do a new game plus? Oh, no. I'm not that strong as Ben, but I don't know. So here's how I would say that: I would probably play through this game again before nine comes out, but I don't know that I would do an entire playthrough again uh, before that. Or okay. the other option, too, is DLC. I probably would go back and play DLC for this game mm-hmm. um, because I, I enjoyed it enough to to want to see what more they would bring yeah. to the table. Um, but I I don't know that I would pick this game up on, like, a whim and just be like, ah, Resident Evil 8. No. I want to play through it again. Bobby? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just no. There's no point. Um, I, I played through it. I enjoyed my time for the most part. I have no reason to play this game again. Uh, I the experience is done, right? Like, um, and I think when we talk about horror games versus horror movies, right? It's so much more of a time sink that, like, if I'm going to play it, it's going to be a long time down the road. Like, I'm still convincing myself to do for one of my favorite games of all time, uh, uh, Dead Space. Dead Space. Yeah. yeah. So um, to play it now. You got the remaster right around. Well, not oh, right. Oh, around, I yeah. When, when it comes out, I will. I will do that. Oh, that's that's easy. a must play when the remaster. Easy, 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 easy. I, I will add on to my fuck no. That I'll. If, I mean, if the DLC comes out and looks okay, I'll do it. Because if you remember, and Corbin tweeted about it at the end of the Resident Evil Seven review, I said the DLC was better than anything in the game. Um, and Corbin agreed with me. Uh, the Seven and then, DLC is very good. It's yeah. very good. Um, so, uh, if DLC comes out, then I'll probably, like, reinstall just so I can play the DLC for mm-hmm. the hour that it's gonna take to, like, whatever. I'll definitely play DLC. I think I'm gonna do a new game plus. I mean, this game made me think a lot of, uh, it, it reminded me a lot of 4, and I pl- I played through Resident Evil 4 probably 20 times, literally, not not even exaggerating. And there are a lot of aspects of this game that felt like they're built for new game plus and it makes mm. me want to do it again uh and now that i've played through it once it's not like a nighttime only kind of game so i feel like i could totally just play like 30 40 minutes at a time and i know the game's gonna be way shorter now because my guns are all better you know i mean you sure. keep all your equipment like it's probably gonna take yeah. me half as long to play it the second time yeah but corbin we have the halo fight that we get to play so. well i'm not gonna play it this my weekend email, by the way <laughs> Yeah, I got my I, email. I, I, oh, I, I, I like got an hour ago. So yeah, <laughs> so excited. It's getting uh, insult in the moment. We get cool. done with the cast. Alan, were you gonna say something about? Um, I said I don't remember. What keep it was. my equipment for the second playthrough, and then you made a face. I think the face he was trying to make was, "Hey, let's get to the scores. Let's rate this game." Ben, why don't you kick us off? Two and a half tops, man. Like. This is this is better than Resident Evil 7 in a lot of ways. I think it's less I think it's worse than Resident Evil 7 in a couple ways. I um so I 
the fact that the gameplay feels better earns it some points. Um, I'm going to give it a two and a half. I just, maybe I'm just not a Resident Evil guy. Who I, knows? I, I am but feeling like, that. Yeah. But like, I just, I, I think that there is a way to make these games way better with a couple more passes at the script and maybe a couple of different voice actors. Um, and yeah. Did you ever play Dead Space? Out of curiosity. I mean, I, I know that I have played the video game Dead Space. I do not know that I ever beat the video game Dead Space. Dead like, Space might be the ultimate version of this type of horror experience. Because I'm, I'm pretty I sure Dead Space that. came out when I was a GA at GameStop, and I probably checked it out. And Yeah, when did that come out? Like 2009 or something, right? That's, uh, it was a while ago. That if it was if it was 2009, then that was right when I started at GameStop, and I'm sure Isaac that Clark's a real one. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, um, he, he is a real one. Um, Isaac Clark is so good. I probably will play through that again too, even though the remake yeah. is coming out. It's gonna be it's a remake. It's not a remaster. So 2008. Okay. So, um. Okay. So two two point five. This? What would I score this? Great. That's yeah. a great question. Um. So I mentioned it earlier. I gave Resident Evil Seven a four, a four out of five. And yes. I stand by that. And overall, I had more fun in this game, right? Uh -huh. uh, I think that a lot of the negatives are shared between titles. I think that the gameplay is a lot better. I think the the biggest pro that Seven has over this one is that Seven is a lot scarier. Seven yes. is scary the whole time. I think that there's very few segments where it isn't, and hmm. Eight is not scary most of the time. It's like almost exactly opposite scares to not scares. And that did kind of bother me a little bit, but I liked it better. I think it's a better game overall. I have to give it a better score, 4.5. Okay. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> okay. I'll go next because yeah. I have the same reasonings, but I think a different answer. Okay. Uh, I like this game more than I like Resident Evil 7, yeah. I, but I felt Resident Evil 7 uh, did more mm. uh, with, with what it was meant to. I think... I think Resident Evil 7's biggest accomplishment and Resident Evil 8's biggest downfall is Resident Evil 7 lets you forget that you're playing a Resident Evil game while subtly giving you more until they have to give you everything right at the end, which is a big failure on its part, right? Resident Evil 8 tries to do the thing where they spread it out, but like the problem is, is Resident Evil is so ham-fisted that like it, it takes away from everything. Mm -hmm. Um I, I, I will say my favorite bit between the two games is the dollhouse. I find it to be just, I, it's just a really just good bit of horror. That being said, while I enjoyed Resident Evil 8 more, I don't, and, and I feel like it's a tighter game, I don't think it's better. Um, so I either have, I, I'm, I'm, I'm floundering, I, I think I'm just going to give it a 4 as well. I was going to give it a 3.5, but I think, I think they're on equal playing fields. They level each other out. You, give, I gave seven, it a you, four you give 7 a 4 also? Seven, four, yeah. So I think, I think I'm going to give it a 4. Um, because I think that while it is a, it, it was a lot of fun, I enjoyed it. I beat it in two sessions and it did not, it did not really bother me that it took me like that, that time out of time to do it. But like, it's it's just it fly, it could have been better mm -hmm. it could have been a better game but they it kind of matches it with the the pros and cons yeah nice alan oh, close us out so i gave resident evil 7 a two and a half this to me is a four it's a pretty yep. big increase in score for me comparatively um, I enjoyed my time with Resident Evil 8 significantly more than I did with 7. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to combat. Combat to me was enjoyable in 8, whereas I did not have a lot of fun with combat in 7. And when 8 is as combat-focused as it is, that's going to do a lot for the score. Um, I also didn't really get a whole lot of scare factor out of 7, but that entire baby sequence did a lot for me in 8. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed all of Castle Demetresk. I it's I think so we didn't we didn't talk about exploration that much. I actually had a great time just looking around this area, and I think mm -hmm. that kind of goes back to my beginning point of graphics and visuals and audio made the exploration side of things more enjoyable for me compared to seven. Um, 
but just overall, I, I had fun. That last fight with Heisenberg, just it's it's so Resident Evil yeah. in in the good ways of Resident, sure. like just the ham fisted nonsense. It's it was, it was boulder punching. It. It's boulder punching meat tornadoes. Yeah, it also, was it was my favorite boss of the game. Easy. Yes. The other thing uh, <laughs> that I wanted to say, getting your heart literally ripped out in front of you, awesome. The one great yeah. thing Mother Miranda does, literally ripping your still, really, which heart really be beating? That's a different, no. that's a whole Mold, different thing. Heart. But it just, watching that happen, loved it. I kind of mm-hmm. called that it was going to happen, like, because you kind of, it, it's pretty obvious that that's, or something to that effect is going to happen. But it, just seeing it was so good. It was so 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 good. Yeah, no, your um, your heart would stop beating if it was disconnected from your body. Yeah, I was more so that's thinking not what like Indiana your, Jones taught me. That, yeah, that's definitely not what the Temple of Doom told us. Yeah, but like your brain would no longer be sending electrical signals down I, there. I, I, Ali about, about, Ma! And more so was getting at would your heart even really be beating if you're mold? Yeah. Anyway, well, like he can, he can make a child, and I'm sure his heart beats. I guess that's true. And well, the, <laughs> If he shoots ropes, his heart beats. Yeah, he, he was able to cream pie Mia, so... Aw, oh, dude. <laughs> that escalated maybe that, too that, far. Maybe too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we... That jumped a whole different level. Oh, yeah. I this feel, this is the last time I, I'm ever going to be on this podcast anyway. I, you guys aren't going to yeah. let me back on well, with the tech sure issues now. I've had tonight. Well, for sure but now. So, yeah. like... Oh god! Oh man! Yeah, god that's, damn! That's, sick freak. So I'll, I'll say that's a pretty, pretty good spread of scores. Honestly, I mean, I think that we we ended up landing closer to the the critical consensus than I was expecting. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that uh, I remember that you know Ben and Alan didn't really like seven, and I wasn't sure how much that was going to change. Uh, for one of you, quite a lot. <laughs> I really enjoyed it comparatively. <laughs> Um, but is it essential? It, yeah. Despite everything, high yeah. scores. Yeah. Is it essential? Can I Robert, go? Nat, you oh, take. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby asked for it. I would love to go first because I think this is going to be the first time my score and my essentiality discussion will differ because mm-hmm. this game is absolutely not non-essential. Mm. No. No, it does nothing to revolutionize what Resident Evil is doing now. Mm. It does nothing to revolutionize the genre. We get a meme, we get Big Lady, right? Which is cool and fine and dandy, but Big Chungus has already gone R.I.P. to a real one. So, like, it's not going to stick around, like, because memes don't have the same um, uh, the, the stickiness that they did in, in, when Skyrim came out. Yeah, you um, remember Uganda Knuckles? That was a whole two weeks. Yeah, like so uh, things things way move more than two weeks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> th- 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 I'm gonna tweet about Uganda on. Knuckles tonight now. <laughs> but things move on, right? Like, and so I just um, I don't know if it has the lasting power, the stopping power. Mm-hmm. It in the same way that like Resident Evil Five doesn't. Resident Evil Five is a really fun game. It's really cool. Um, or even like Code Veronica, which is like a really fun game. Like they're just it's Probably it's going the to be the best forgotten Resident Evil game out of yes. all of them. Yes, it, it's games that fit within. It fits neatly within. It's it's a it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a good middle of the road. It's 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 the return of Michael Myers, right? Where it's a good game. It's a good game. It's a good movie that everybody forgets about, and for like half decent good reasons, right? Like because Return of Michael Myers is fucking sick, but mm-hmm. like. Do you care about Halloween 4? Probably not. Is it your favorite Halloween movie? If it is, fuck you. Uh, like, um, it's just not, it, this game is just not essential. Like, it's fun, it's great, it's a romp, but, like, it's just not. Yeah. I think that that's a, a great set of reasons there. And I... Hey, thank you, so. When you were saying all those things, I saw Alan's face looked like he wanted to combat a few points specifically. I'm going to call him next. I, I've i wavered a bit uh, uh, after I finished it because I really did enjoy it. And I was like, okay. When I finished it, I, I kind of sat back, uninstalled the game swiftly because uh, I need that hard drive space. Got it. And Halo tonight. Exactly. Um and I, I, I knew score-wise, four was just... That was set in stone. I knew that's where I was going to land there. 
And I kind of started thinking, how how essential is this game? And I think there are parts where it makes the argument that it should be. Basically, through the first two sequences of the game, I think it's making a pretty strong case for that. And the latter half is where I think it more falters Mm -hmm. compared to where I would expect it to be to really be fully essential. Sure. Um, I think this is kind of a no-but situation for me Got a lot of where i think no but if you enjoy anything remotely resident evil then it probably is is essential for you i mean if you're already in the franchise and already you know kind of curious about it then you probably should really play it i i think so, so it's, it's kind of one of those the, wavery. the same reason we gave for infinite darkness <laughs> I guess if you're I, huge into Resident Evil. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it doesn't diminish it. I think the thing we we need to avoid when we say no's here is it doesn't diminish how good of just a video game it is. No. And that's I think the importance of the score aspect of of why we do the way we do yeah. here is yeah. it may not I necessarily agree. be something where you need to drop everything you're doing and go play this game, but like if if you're you know looking at the Xbox store and you see Resident Evil Eight is like. 30 bucks it's probably worth your money and probably worth it to yeah. play the oh, game at that oh, point yeah. Yeah. you know like it's it, it it'll it kind of makes its argument for itself i think a lot of these like no but games are like yeah they're maybe not essential but man if you can get one on sale play the game it's a great game you know so that, that's kind of where i land with resident great Bullet. production meeting guys i love that <laughs> ben hard no i like We've just got all over here. <laughs> just like absolutely not in any way, shape, or form. I I I so agree with Bobby. Bobby said this does this game does nothing to revolutionize, and he could have stopped it. This game does nothing, and I think it would have been a fine statement. Um, and my guy, you, know, you have harder opinions than I do. Soft. Like what is happening? I just like <laughs> man. Maybe, maybe just because like I'm not really in the horror genre that much, like I have different expectations of horror. Um, I just, I just, I'm, I haven't deleted this off of my Xbox yet because I haven't really had a need to. But I got to install this Halo flight, so I'm gonna delete this just to make sure I have enough room. Like nice. I don't even know if I need to, but it's gone. Like, <laughs> so I just hard no, man. Not essential in any way. Okay. Uh, well, just to keep this uh, roller coaster going, I'm going to say yes. <gasps> and here's why. I think that it is a great jumping on point in the Resident Evil franchise, much better than 7, because it is unabashedly Resident Evil. And on top of that, an incredible game. It is one of, one of, if not the best, action horror games I've ever played. It feels similar to Diablo in the way that it shows its horror side while still being action forward. I mm-hmm. mentioned it earlier that I thought it was very similar to the uh, mid-2000s classic Van Helsing, which I think is a huge heap of praise for me, and it has a lot of negatives associated with that, too. Maybe a little long in the tooth. That movie doesn't need to be as long as it is, but it is. And I love that you're like, I, I love that when you say that, yeah. it's very clearly for all of us a praise. But for anybody who's listening, it can really go either way. Yeah. Like, I think that this this game is this game sold a ton of copies, and I think it's going to have a large cultural impact. I think that people are going to be talking about this game much longer than seven. And I think that even though I, I said yes to seven for largely meta reasons. I think that this one is a yes on its own. Hmm. It's just All a right. great game, guys. It's really fun. <laughs> uh, that being said, um, speaking of Star Trek... <laughs> uh, that easily the, cl- the cleanest transition we've ever yeah. had. Oh, uh, so, so just smooth. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I'm really on it tonight, and I'm really it, glad that you Bobby, guys can... Bobby, can, Bobby. can yeah. It was smoother than your face last week. We'll say that much. I don't know. see. I, my my face is still a little bumpy because it, it's hard to it's hard to shave those that little that, that little final stubble away. So you know, uh, 
I don't know how to feel about it anymore. Also, Alan's the one person that just can't talk shit yeah. about this. True, 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 true. 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 Uh, but hey, where can we find you guys? Where you, and what you've been up to? That's right. Ben. 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 Um, I you can find me at Hutch six two one nine one in most places, including my Venmo. If you want to help me buy a new computer, um, or <laughs> love love your shilling. Big Listen, fan what, of that. Whatever, it's fine. Big, uh, like, just, no, no, no. Get your bag. Legit hut, big fan. Hut, hey, hut, paper, hutch 62191 paper, on right? Venmo. Um, <laughs> I'll send you feet pics if you want them, I guess. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, you're increasing the value. I know. I want, now, now you're maybe selling... I want, maybe, no, no, maybe I selling want a 3090, product, right? you know? You do not like, support quid pro, quid pro quo here. Um... <laughs> Yeah, what what I'm gonna be doing is playing the Halo test flight. You know what I mean, boys? <laughs> Let's play a real video game for a second. Oh man, wow. cool. Also at just the Batman on Twitter, you can see me talk about mental health in if not he, if, healthy ways. If he lets you, if I if I allow you to follow me. Yeah. Oh, he went private. Yeah, he's always Uh-oh. been private. I think. Yeah. Ben's oh yeah. Free speech jail. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ben has freedom phone oh. confirmed. Um, so I uh, haven't been doing too terribly much these this past week or so. Um, You've I, been in three different states in the past four days. <laughs> that's true. Um, I did travel. You've been New doing York quite a lot, work, actually, that, and New Jersey technically. Um, I I basically got home yesterday after being gone from last Thursday. It's been it's been a whole situation. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot going on for me. Uh, we got rained on tonight when we tried to play disc golf. That was yeah. depressing and sad. Um, RIP. I did get to use xCloud again some more, playing Yakuza Like a Dragon. It's a fun game, and xCloud works great. Um, but other than that, you can find me at a seal punter oh. just about anywhere. Uh, Instagram's gonna be mostly disc golf. Twitter, you know, I don't tweet a whole lot, but boy oh boy do I get back to you. <laughs> Bobby. Nice. Oh, me. Um, yes, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash the red weenie where you can watch my my microphone as I forget to turn my stream off for eight hours. Uh, you can it's do that. It's really riveting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I woke up this morning and uh, I, I wanted to like check my stream stats uh, and I looked and uh, I was already like, like, I was like in my car, like right about to go into my job. And I looked and I was like, oh, no. Oh God! That's it's it says it says I'm live. What have I done? Uh, so, <laughs> my wife, so, where's my stream summary? <laughs> yeah, uh, but but uh, I I I also stream Destiny uh, a couple times a week or at least once a week. Um, and I, I will stream any game we play for this uh, for this uh, podcast. So you can find me there. You can find all my relevant socials there. Uh, my Twitter, where I I, I basically repost uh, leftist political people and 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 funny memes, and then uh, I post pictures of me uh, and shirtless and my dog. So if you think I'm a hot himbo, uh, you know, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I guess uh, I'm not, but you know, hey, a boy can dream, right? Uh, yeah, that's me. How about you, Corbin? Yep. So you can find me anywhere at Corbangering. Uh, Twitter's my main place. I'm there a lot, so if you want to talk, hit me up. Uh, you'll see me tweeting about uh, Destiny, Halo, Transformers. Those are kind of like the things I tweet about the most. Um, recently, I have been watching a, a couple of off-topic things, but re- I watched the new Masters of the Universe show, Masters of the Universe Revelation, which is on Netflix, and I bring it up because in episode 4... It's a horror episode, and Tony Todd plays Scareglow, and it is sick. He does such a good job. Uh, it's uh, he's like this like fear demon character, basically. It's really really cool. Even if you don't like He Man, I recommend just popping on that one episode. It's only twenty minutes long. Just check it out. Um, so yeah, that's that's been me. Um, I'm I'm gonna be playing Halo too, so. Uh, I'll be on the stream. You can find me at twitch.tv slash corbangering. I'm going to be streaming Halo, guys. Alan's Are got you going to be watching any particular movie franchise here in the next week or two? <laughs> yeah, I am, actually. I think there might be something coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, Alan and I are going to be watching through Friday the 13th, the whole franchise. 
and we've got a new side series coming at all of you, starting on... Including Fear Street 1978, or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate there. I see you. Uh, first episode of that is going to hit on Friday the 13th in August, so watch out for that Friday the 13th 1980 special. I have a lot of thoughts on that movie. Right. Um, you can follow the podcast anywhere at Essential Scares. We are really active on Twitter. You can also join our Discord if you want to talk to us. We're there all the time. I think uh, that's it, though, right? I think it is, yeah. I think we did. That wraps us up. Pretty, pretty great episode, boys. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you to everybody for watching. If you like the show, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Share with your friends. If you Please. didn't like the show, tell us what you didn't like, and maybe we'll try to fix it by next week. Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, next week, we're watching American Psycho. Thank you so much, Alan, Bobby, Ben, for being on the show this week. I have been your host, Corbin, and this has been Essential Scares. Put it down. <laughs>